When you live in an RV and there's talk of severe weather like tornadoes, large hail, lots of rain, flooding, where do you go for a safe port? Let's go down that road. Looking out the windows at night, this cross was lit up from behind and it was just such a comfort to know that we were under the cross during the whole stormy time. Because of, there was a threat of hail, our RV did not fit underneath that awning, but our truck did. So Gary parked the truck under there for safekeeping, just in case. So that was an extra benefit. We're gonna leave a little thank you for the church, as well as a little, little something for the offering plate. <laughs> thank you, Living Waters. I'm Orlean and I'm Gary <laughs> and we are back on the road again after a couple of kind of scary days at least stormy <laughs> yeah stormy scary same difference to me anyway <laughs> uh, we left Houston a week ago and since then we stayed in the Sam Houston National Forest for a night and we met some interesting people there. If you want to read about that, check out our Facebook page. I put some pictures and, and uh, some of the stories of the people we met there. Then from there we went to Tyler and Tyler is where Gary served a vacancy last year. If you're new to our channel, Gary is a retired pastor who's just retired now for the, what, seventh time since you retired? <laughs> the first time. Many retirements. <laughs> and he, we usually serve a church vacancy in the south, someplace warm in the winters, and then we go back to Wisconsin again in the spring and summer. We just, we went up to Tyler because the pastor has been there now for a year, and we wanted to see the congregation again. That was great. And then we also got to spend time with the Piney Ridge Gang, the RV park where we stayed while we were there last year and had a great time with all of them too. The time was very short, but we're allowing for things like what we're gonna talk about today, and that is um, some delays with storms, highway construction, all kinds of things that happen in the spring. Any breakdowns? We don't talk about breakdowns. No. Okay, we'll just pass on that. We need to be to Wisconsin by a specific date for our grandson's confirmation. So we want to make sure that we're allowing enough time for that and time to see some things too. After Tyler, Gary found out there was a pastor's conference in a place of Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh, Texas, which is in the northeast part, not too far from Tyler. And we were able to stay in a beautiful campground there, really close to the conference center and everything. And it wasn't a huge group. It was great. There were guys there from Arkansas and Oklahoma and Texas, and we knew quite a few of them. We had dinner with some of them, and it was great. We were there for two nights, and then the storms were coming. And so that's what we needed to decide, where do we go from here? After Camp Shiloh, on our way to, we weren't sure for sure where, we were gonna go through Texarkana. So I contacted them. They were in the middle of a project. We were half an hour away. And they were in the middle of a project. They dropped everything, hopped in their car, and took off for Texarkana. They live about 20 minutes away from there. And they met us in Texarkana at a Walmart, took us out to a late lunch, and we had a wonderful visit. But it was just really fun to actually meet them. So thank you, Jackie and Mark for meeting us on such a short notice, that was great. The problem we were having was that it didn't matter which direction we went, they were all in this huge storm system. And it was
was a two day thing. If we went towards Oklahoma, it was gonna hit there first, the first storm. There were multiple storms. That was the other problem. <laughs> and they all said possibility of tornadoes, high winds, large hail, which can break windows and do all kinds of damage, and lots of rain, which can cause flooding. There was a lot of things that we were looking at as uh, things that we did not want to run into. So we couldn't go into Oklahoma because that's where the first storms were hitting. And then we looked at going more north and um, east into Arkansas. And it, the, the one storm that went through Oklahoma and Missouri was going to miss most of where we were in Arkansas. But the next storm, the one that they were really talking was the big one, they didn't say where it was starting and what direction it was coming from. It was really hard. We tried the National Weather Service. We tried AccuWeather. We tried what the weather station. We tried local news. We tried everything to figure out where this storm was going to be coming from, and we could not. Several years ago, yeah. we stopped at a church in Hot Springs Village. Hot Springs Village is uh, about northwest of Hot Springs, and it's a gated community of about 13,000 people, I think. And you can only get into it with a pass from someone inside that you know. So we remembered the building, we remembered the, the layout of the parking lot and the trees and everything. It's a very wooded area. We debated on staying at Camp Shiloh where we were the night before, but it was a lot of trees. And now it might be confusing when I say there was a wooded area at Hot Springs Village, but what we remembered was that the trees were all on the perimeter of the property. There wasn't anything directly on the property where we would be able to park. We don't want to be parked under trees, big trees, when there could be high winds or hail. We don't want to be under a lot of big trees. We also don't want to be under any power lines. And we remembered there were no power lines there too at least nothing overhead where we were going to park. We parked on the south side of the building because most of the storms were coming up from the south and moving northeast. So we thought, well, anything on the south side of the building should be safe. Being parked in the church parking lot worked out really well for us. The, it was amazing. I, we did a lot of praying. A lot of praying and those storms would break up some of the, the really bright red stuff was breaking up before it would get to us and then it would maybe go around us it would not we, we didn't feel any wind we didn't get the hail we didn't get we got some very loud thunder and close lightning strikes that was kind of scary and then uh, a lot of rain for two days it just rained and rained and rained because the rain wasn't going to clear up until last night so we decided we would just stay another day because we didn't want to be traveling a lot in the rain the scenery isn't as good either no we wanted to enjoy the scenery which I'm going to show you here in just a second We have been in other situations where there's been storms 
that were approaching out of the blue. Uh, one time in Wisconsin, there was one that was really bad. And what we did that time was we took an exit. It was a really high ramp that went up. And when you exited off to the right, we went down into a parking lot kind of below. So we had that, that hill from the ramp shielding us. There were also two or three semis that had pulled over at the same time, and we were kind of between two or three of them, if I remember right, and that shielded us as well. That was a really scary looking storm, and uh, a lot of high wind with that, but we didn't feel most of it because of that hill and because of the trucks next to us. There was another time we got caught in a windstorm in Nebraska. And we were pulled over into a, a Cabela's. And at that Cabela's, it was in Sydney, Nebraska, and that is the headquarters for Cabela's. And at that one, they had a paid campground. Normally, uh, a lot of times you can stay in a Cabela's anywhere across the country for free overnight, depending on the city. But this one had a paid campground. And we took the cheap place and we went into the gravel part and we, this wind came up overnight and it was rocking us something terrible. It was hitting us broadside. So that's a lesson we learned. You do, you, you watch where the wind is going to be coming from. You do not want to be having it hitting you broadside. It would, would have been better hitting us from the, the front or the back, but not the side when you're in an RV. Now, last year, when we left Tyler, Texas, we went east and we went towards Florida. It's always a very important thing to do to be watching the weather of what's ahead. So every day, if you're gonna be heading out, check the weather to see what's ahead. Or you might decide to stay there because it might be a safer place to be. So always check the weather for where you're going to be going and compare it to where you are now should you stay another day and just kind of delayed our, our travels a little bit and stayed in one place for a couple of days. So that's also another good idea when you're in this time of year right now we're I mean we're we're going up through tornado alley right now basically in the Midwest. Um, not a good time of year to be going this direction, but it looks like it's going to be good. The forecast looks like it's going to be good for the next week. A lot of sunny days and no storms in the forecast. Another tip is don't try and outrun a storm. If you are enough ahead of it that you can keep going, okay, then yeah, um, maybe change your direction, do something different to stay ahead of it, and hopefully get out of the system so you're not gonna be in the path. Um, but trying to outrun a storm that you are in at the time is not a good idea. You're gonna wanna pull over if you can because that is the safest thing you can do. We've heard pros and cons of parking under an overpass if you're on the interstate and you are coming up and approaching an overpass that you could park under temporarily to weather out part of the storm. We've heard good and bad about that. Um, part of the bad part of it is that, first of all, you're taking up a lot of room and other people can't be under there also. That's one thing. But the other thing is that with an RV, you have propane. And with propane, it's, it's almost like you'd be in a tunnel. When you're going through tunnels with your propane on, that is not a good idea. So I think that's why some people say it's not a good thing to park underneath an overpass. If you know another reason, let us know. So the big tips are don't park under trees or power lines. Try to avoid storms as much as possible by checking the weather ahead of time. Be constantly checking the weather to see if there's been changes or 
you know, like a change in direction or it's begun, it's gotten bigger or whatever, hopefully smaller, places to pull off that are safe. A rest area is a good place to also pull over because rest areas are also storm shelters. So in the event of a tornado, you can get out of your vehicle and go into the visitor center or the, west, the rest area for your shelter. If you have any tips on what to do to avoid storms or to what to do in case you're caught in the storm, please give some tips below in the comments. We appreciate that and uh, that'll help other people who are reading them as well. The scenery we're going to be showing you is on, right now we're on Highway 9. When we were getting gas just outside of Hot Springs Village, there was a woman who was admiring our RV. Um, the colors that we have on and everything. She thought it was really cute. And so she was telling us not to take Highway 7 for the first part. Um, she said there was some road construction. So we're taking, we took Highway 9. We will take, then we'll get on I-40 for a little bit and then we'll pick up 7 from there where the roads are supposed to be better. And so we're gonna show you some scenery. Enjoy. This is the most elevation we've had in a while. What goes up must go down. stopped at the Overlook and oh my gosh this is gorgeous so pretty imagine this in the fall of the year but look at all the greens of spring
to the end here, it says very sharp corners, 20 miles an hour, 25 mile an hour curve on this one. Steep, 7% <laughs> grade. We've done that before. We've done worse than that before. Very pretty road. And there was so much to see along the way that we didn't do had we known there were other places to stop and see different different trails and different scenic things along the way. Oh, this one's 15 miles an hour for trucks. My ears are popping. <laughs> you can hear them. <laughs> <laughs> feel like I'm coming down on an airplane. Ay, 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 ay. And we are coming to Jasper population 466. That is at the bottom of the hill. For 19 miles. It's a cute little town for 400 people. Goodness gracious, they have all kinds of things. Museum of junk. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun to go to. Bubba's. There was Bubba's back there. And there was another street before I started recording this. They have a boardwalk. Hi. Interesting.